This episode's brought to you by Lincoln Logs. Uh, Lincoln Logs are a toy that kids love to play with, and men love to... Well, I don't know what the fuck I'm going to say there. Uh, Lincoln Logs, it's a great toy, Then you can could, you could buy them now at lincolnlogs.com. Uh, today, on today's episode, I'm talking about the past two weeks. Okay, first of all, I need to say I'm fucking sorry, everybody. I'm sorry. I said something and I didn't stick to it. And I'm usually not that type of guy. Usually I say something, I stick to it. Two weeks ago, I was like, I'm back on the podcast and I'm not fucking stopping. And there's never going to be another break for the rest of the year. What did I do? The next weekend, I took off. Okay, I fucked up. And I'm and and part of fucking up is being aware. Okay, there's stages of of fucking up. Recognize his stage number one. Okay, recognize what it did. What it did. God. Okay. Recognize what you did wrong. Right. What did I do wrong? I told you guys that I was going to be on the podcast every week, and I wasn't. That's that was wrong of me. Stage two is accept the reality of being wrong, which a lot of people just don't like to do because most people are pieces of shit. But okay, I was wrong. I shouldn't have done that. And I accept that. And I realize that uh, it's unfair to you guys. Step three is take a fucking, a fucking Glock. Nope. Uh, Step three is apologize and say the reasons why you apologize. And step four is say what you're going to do to change things. And that does not mean that it's time to end your life. Okay? Just apologize. It's not a make or break thing. Just say you're sorry. Um, so I'm sorry. And from here on out now, I, now I have a couple backups in the fucking, in the storage. So now if I'm not going to do a podcast, I'm just going to post a backup. And now I can guarantee you, I can assure you every Sunday, Fucking 2 p.m. around 2 p.m. There will be a kicks and giggles podcast until the fucking day I die, uh, or until the end of the year at least. I could guarantee that. So that's fair enough, right? Um, what else is there? So for this week on the podcast, this episode, I'm talking about my New York trip. I'm talking about this little love love thing that I have going on lately. Um, and we're just gonna, you know, we're just gonna chill. There's a couple other things I have to check my notes because I just fucking forgot it. And I'm a big, I'm a big idiot. I'm a big idiot and I'm a big loser. Okay, so give me one sec so I can check my notes. Uh, oh, I got a job at Urban Outfitters. Uh, I'm gonna talk about that. I'm gonna talk about my merch. Oh yeah, my fucking birthday. Now I remember. Now I'm getting into the fucking, vi- now I'm getting into the vines. Um, so first off, I'm 21 years old now. Thank you for if you said happy birthday, and if you didn't, then you're a huge piece of shit, and I never want to speak to you ever again in my entire life, and I hope that you are severely injured. Just kidding. Uh, you know, I don't really like doing birthdays anymore. It's It was fun when I was like 16, 17, 18, high school, fucking everyone's messaging you and getting hugs in school, and you get a fucking bathroom BJ. Uh, and stuff like that. When you have a lot of friends and like that's part of your life, it's cool. But I don't really have a lot of friends now. I got my squad. I got, I definitely have a lot of people that I know. Um, and I did go a lot of people. So thank you if you said happy birthday. But there are two types of people on their birthdays, okay? There's the birthday person that accepts the fact that they don't have a lot of friends anymore and they cherish the, the, happy birthdays that are sent to them, whether it's five or 50, whatever your low amount of number is. Um, and you know, they're cool with it and they're genuinely happy. I was genuinely happy. I was actually surprised at some of the people that said happy birthday to me, but I was happy with it. You know, I, I had a great day. I spent the whole day with my girlfriend, which we'll get to that. And, uh, and it was just a great day. You know, you can't fucking ask for a better day. Uh, and, and I got a lot of people that said happy birthday. The other type of person is the guy that, or girl, that will post about it and be like, today's my birthday, fuck yeah. And they're just like fishing for people to be like, yo, hell yeah, dude. And that's fucking cringy. Don't be like that. Um, you could also like subtly do it. Um, but yeah, like when you see someone post on Snapchat, post on Instagram, post on their story, fucking post a tweet, 
and it's like, hey, today's my birthday. It's just so fishy, so fishy fuckery, you know? And we don't do fish or fishy, we don't do fishies on this show. We don't do that type of shit. I actually did, I was reposting people's, like a few people posted on their story, happy birthday, and then I reposted it. And then I even looked at myself and I was like, am I fishing? Because I don't want to be looked at as that guy. But when you post a picture, it's like, you know, I've done it before. When I was 18, I posted a picture saying like, thank you for saying happy birthday. And it was me and my boss. And then I realized like the only reason I'm doing this is because like somewhere deep down, I'm sad because I don't have a lot of friends and I'm attempting to get more people's attention. And I accepted that. But not this fucking year. Not this year. The other day, and by the way, 21, I don't give a fuck who you are. 99% of people, by the time they're 19 or 20, they've already drank alcohol. They've already been drunk. So a lot of people are like, what are you going to, where are you going to go? What are you going to do? And I'm just chilling. You know, I don't need to go fucking drink. There's no re, I've done it before. If I didn't like drinking when I was 20, just because I'm 21 doesn't mean I'm all of a sudden going to love drinking. You know, it's not my shit. It's not my style. Fuck, fuck you. I do enjoy one drink once in a while. The type of guy that I am is like fucking five days after my birthday, I went to walk and fire alone. I got um, some sushi and I got a little cocktail and there was a little bit of alcohol in it, but it was nothing major. It didn't even get me tipsy. It just was like a little fucking edge, a little edge off. It was a little edging, you know? And that was good. I enjoyed the fact that I could have like a cool fruity drink that they fucking made, but I'm not getting drunk. I'm not doing all that. And that's just not who I am. And it's not who I am, whether I'm 15 or 87. Um, and that's, that's that. I, I'm firm. That's not who I am. So 20, yeah, I mean, 21, it's fucking, the, the only thing that I actually am excited to do is gamble. I think that's the part where, you know, you might see a little bit of a downfall in my life. I do plan on going to a casino. I want to play poker. I want to sit across an old man and look him in the eyes and take away some of his fucking money through a game. I do find that a little fun, but getting drunk, I don't find that exciting. And even clubs and shit, like, God, it's just, I've lived 20, here's the thing, here's really how it's simple it is. I've lived 20 years without going to a club and jumping around with a whole bunch of fucking people. I think I'm, I think I'm used to it now, you know? It doesn't mean that just because I'm 21 now, I need to go clubbing and fucking... Like, people that do that, when I see people turn 21, if your life drastically changes, then you're fucking lost. If you all of a sudden start going to parties, or all of a sudden start going to, like, I don't know, bars and shit, and you didn't do it as much any like before, or if you do it more, you're just a... You're, you gotta figure shit out, you know? So that's that. Uh, for New York... I was in New York last week for four days, and um, I did a fucking lot. I really did a lot. I had a beautiful trip. Every time I go to New York, it's just amazing. It's so tight, and it's so fucking easy to get everywhere. It's not like LA where you have to fucking drive 80 miles or 80 minutes, and it's only a two-mile ride. I don't know. It's just, I don't know. That's actually how New York is. Fuck LA sometimes, okay? Fuck LA's traffic. Everything is 90 miles away. And it's just, it's, you can't, I, I don't, I don't, I can't relate to it. And now in New York, this is a big part of it, which I'll explain what I did there in a second. But in 2022, New York's getting a fucking beach in Manhattan. They're building a beach right now. And it's like just started. And there's going to be sand it's going to be everything you've ever wanted in one little area. I mean, you got you got Central Park, which I had actually never been to Central Park before. I just went there last week. I fucking laid in the so- in the soccer field. It's not a soccer field. I laid in the in the grass and I just looked at the beautiful fucking thing, the beautiful scenery and the skyline and I just wanted to come. That's how happy I was. You ever get that happy? Um, but not in a fucking creepy, weird way. I just wanted to, I felt like I could have easily been laying down and I could have finished in happiness. Um, because I was so, I was living. 
and the fucking pizza. You get a piece of pizza. You just walk around alone. I don't even know where the fuck I'm going half the time. At this point, I'm so used to how New York works. Like It's like a grid. It's like 1st through 11th fucking wide and then 1st through 200 long, whatever the fuck it is. Um, everything's so close. I went to the Sirius XM building, or I don't know what the official name of the building's called. I went to, uh, it's actually not Sirius. I went to iHeart's building, and I went to Elvis Duran's floor. I walked up there. I got to see some of their their like wrap-up of the show. And then I hooked Maida Gandhi up with some sneakers. So shout out to you. I fucking love her so much. And then I saw everybody. I saw Scary Jones. I saw, now I have to name them all. I saw Danielle. I saw fucking, there's so many. David Brody. I saw Elvis Duran, obviously. I, I met uh, Maida Gandhi's boyfriend. I saw the whole crew. We hugged hello. Everyone checked in. We were seeing how each other was doing. We were all talking. And then I waited for Elvis at the end. He said like, um, when he saw me, because I was I was saying hi to everybody and I was just originally going to sell the shoes to Maida and then leave. But then Elvis saw me and he was like, I love Angela. I want to see him. So I fucking gave him a hug. We talked a little bit. He made me laugh a lot. And that was that. So hopefully I'm going to do the show again in the near future. I, I don't, I'm not the type of guy to ask that type of shit just because I know that they have like Taylor Swift on it. So they're fucking good right now. But yeah, man, they're so fucking, they're just the best people, the best group of people I've ever even met. I don't give a fuck if it's high school, a party, uh, family members. That's, I've never seen like 15 people be all so fucking nice and so kind and like all on the same fucking vibe. That's rare to find. They're just a great group of people. Like my dream, one of my dream jobs is to be a co-host on that show or help them in some fucking way. It's really a dream. They're, they're fucking amazing. I love you guys all. So my eyes look really fucked up right now. I only got like four hours of sleep, so I'm not high. I just, they look fucked. I don't know why. And I'm also, I don't have my nails painted, and they look like absolute shit, so sorry I have to do that. Look at my little fleshy fucking creepy hands. Hands are creepy when they aren't painted. <sighs> Anyways, um, I did the Sam Roberts Not Shoes show. It was like an hour and 45 minute long podcast. He started out with his co-host Reed. And then I did the back end. It was a really, really fun episode. I had a great time. Every time I've been in New York, I think the past 10 times I've seen Sam Roberts. So we always get food. We always check in with each other, go out to eat or like walk around even. Sometimes I just walk with him to his car and we say what's up, grab a picture. And we fucking really got a, really got a good friendship going here. It's not just a shout out. It, this is no longer a business transaction with a lot of these celebrities that I'm meeting. Um, and just to have them in my life and it's not even a beneficial, there's no value. I'm not in it for what they could bring to me business wise. Having them in my life, knowing their story is just so inspiring and it's just fucking mentor type of friendships. It's not like a basic friendship that you don't really learn shit from each other. So that's that. And then I also did Would You Kindly with Eric Nagel. Um, that was fucking awesome. He He's in the compound media floor on some fucking huge building in New York. And he showed me their studio. They actually do like a TV show and a radio show there as well. So it's a serious studio. But I did that show with him. And it was the first time I ever met him. So he, he did kind of have to learn a little bit about me in like a harder way. Um... He asked me a lot about collecting sneakers, which I don't necessarily know a fuckload about collecting. I'm more in the business of selling and buying and all that and like day trading. But I gave my knowledge on, on why people collect sneakers. We talked about it more as like a, just a why people collect it and why is it so cool and compare collecting sneakers to collecting action figures. We did a lot of that. He asked me about some of, you know, being on the Burt cast and how I kind of like my, my fucking story that I always tell when I do these shows, but it is a little bit different because it's more focused on collecting. So I do think it's worth watching for you guys. I'll probably post that, uh, eventually, but on my Instagram, it'll definitely be up there. So that's that. And thank you, Sam. Thank you, Eric. Thank you fucking Elvis 
made uh, all of you guys for welcoming me. Uh, it was it was a good time. I also fucking drank uh, what did I drink? Rum and coke in my hotel. They like saw that I was about to be 21 and they didn't give a fuck. So they offered me a drink and I had one. But it's really it's not cool. You think it's cool because like adults do it and then you like finally feel like you could fit in. It's not or it's really not cool. Once in a while a drink is fine, but literally there will probably never be a day that I have more than two drinks. There will really be never a, there will never be a day that I have more than two drinks. Um, and if it is, it's going to be once every seven years. And there were there will very rarely be a day that I have more than one drink. I mean, even a month that I have more than one drink. It's not a thing that I focus on at all. I'm trying to get this fucking money, guys. Um, and talking about getting money, I used to work at Buckle, right? Buckle is a retail store that is a fucking hell to live in. Or not to live in, to work for. Um, and I mean that in the nicest way possible. I very much respect the company and the people that work there in some way, but they're exhausting to work for. You fucking walk into Buckle, you want to buy a t-shirt and the fucking meta, like the script that they give all of their salespeople, you have to walk up to them and say like, Hey, I saw you were looking at shirts. Have you tried our denim? We also have accessories that go well with it. And you have to bring them like... If they're looking at shirts, you have to bring them jeans and a she- and a fucking hoodie. Or if they're looking at jeans, you have to bring them two tops and a pair of sunglasses. They have to, their rule is like, show up with product. And that sucks so fucking bad. Not only for the customer, but for the salesperson as well. Because I remember, and, and I've told stories like this, so I'm not going to get too deep into them. But I remember working for Buckle and uh, just fucking... People would be like, dude, please leave me the fuck alone. Guys would get pissed off at me. Women would be like telling me to fuck off. And it's like not up to me sometimes. I just had to do that. Eventually, I would just tell Buckle, like the manager, like I'm not doing this shit. And I'm going to sell more than the fucking people that do. But yeah, I mean, just their rules were very fuck fucked. And the store is a little bit smaller than Urban that I work at now. Urban Outfitters in Woodfield, by the way. If anybody lives around there, if you want to fucking visit me, go to Urban Outfitters and say what's up. I would love to see you guys. And please don't fucking rob this, rob me, you know? Don't do anything mean. If you want to do something nice and you live in Illinois and you want to see me, Woodfield Mall, Urban Outfitters, come say hi. Um, but yeah, Urban is just... They literally tell you, like, say hi to customers. If they ask you, help them. If you have a recommendation that you think is good, feel free to do it. Otherwise, it's chill. You don't have to do anything. Buckle was like, you must do this. You must bring fucking shoes. You must wipe the customer's ass with your fucking tongue. And you must bring them... Dude, oh my God. The other thing that they did at Buckle... Sorry to shit on them. But when they would be in the fitting rooms... Like someone would be in the fitting room trying on jeans and a pair of... Or jeans and a fucking shirt. And they would bring shoes that were random fucking sizes and just start sliding them under the fucking door. And they'd be like, hi, if you want to try these, I got a 9, a 10, and 11. And the poor guy's in there trying a pair of jeans on and he's got fucking 60 bucks to his name. Then he has to, like you're pressuring people. It's not cool. Uh, Urban is a lot more, it's almost cringy how like laid back they are. They're just like, do your fucking thing. We don't care. We just want to embrace ourselves. They're very, they're very hipster like, but it's a dream come true compared to working at Buckle. So yeah. And the reason why I like to work these part-time jobs is, I mean, I do need the money for sure. I'm, I'm no way rich or anything like that, but, um, it's because like you got to fucking, you got to have structure. When I have structure in my life, I feel like I could fucking breathe. Um, a lot of times I'm worried about girlfriends, worried about money. Every, you, everybody worries about finances in some fucking way, unless your dad's like a billionaire, uh, and you just get like your ass wiped for you. But people that are rich worry about finances just as much as people that are broke worry about finances. So worried a bit about that. And now I'm like, got a little bit more comfortable. I got my shoe money. I have like multiple channels of money again, which is great. Um, and being in the mall, I get to make customers because I'm seeing people and I'm telling them my own shit. 
hey, I sell shoes, hey, I have a podcast, I'm a walking advertisement. So it's a little bit of mix of that. And honestly, talking to people every single day in the mall trains me to not be nervous. So it's like I benefit from like personal fucking comedy podcast stuff and meeting comedians and celebrities. I benefit on that because every day I'm trained to like meet new people and not get nervous. Uh, I'm trained to sell sneakers more and like promote my shit a little bit more. And it's just like makes me busier during the day. I don't fucking know. So I'm getting my life in a, I'm getting my life. I'm I'm fucking really happy right now is basically what it is. A lot of the times I do this podcast and it's a therapy thing. And I look at it as like, this is my exit. We have fun. We talk about goofy shit, but now I'm comfortable and I'm like, I got a girlfriend now. We're officially fucking locked in. We're locked in with promise rings. It's like a for real thing. Um, But I'm going to talk more about that as the relationship goes on. But um, yeah, I just made things official. So this weekend, the reason why I also wasn't doing it is because she's going away to school and it was like our last week and a half together. And I do very much like I, I like to have a nice life balance. I give her a lot of time. I still go to New York on my trips. I'm still doing my podcast, but I figured one more fucking week. I've already fucked up the past month so many times. So one more week I took off. We had a nice day. We went to the zoo. She actually asked me to be her boyfriend, which is fucking so sweet, even though I kind of asked her, but she's going to say that she asked me. One day I'll probably have her on the podcast. I want to be like Tiger Belly. If you guys don't know who Bobby Lee is, Bobby Lee is a fucking hilarious comedian, and he has a podcast called Tiger Belly, and I think him and his wife or him and his fiance, whatever they fucking name themselves... Uh, they do the show and like Chris D'Elia will be on, but they all talk. It's also like the H3H3 podcast, which is Ethan and Isla. I don't know what the fuck their names are. What is it? Ethan and Ela? I don't know their names. It's a guy and his fucking wife and they do the podcast together. And it's just really, my girlfriend, by the way, is so fucking smart. I mean, she's got like a 32, 31 on her ACT. She's going to like an Ivy League school. She's got a fucking, she's getting a master's degree. I mean, this girl doesn't fuck around. When I go for, like, I've known her for a year and a half, and I I don't fuck around when it comes to making things serious. I'm not the type of guy to just meet a girl and two weeks in have her be my girlfriend. I wanted to make sure that it was, like, perfect. And when when I have a girlfriend, I'm, like, all in. I'm not fucking Snapchat flirting. I'm not DMing broads on Instagram. I'm not fucking doing a damn thing. I'm all in. Um, and with her, it just, everything was fucking great. I could not complain about one thing. We don't argue about dumb shit. She doesn't act like a fucking cunt. Uh, she's just amazing. And I'll talk a lot more about her in the future, but if you hear this, you know that I fucking miss you. Um, so yeah, I, that's, that's basically the reason why I didn't do the podcast and I, it's probably overexplained. I know you don't really need to know about my personal life, but we're fucking... If I could talk about uh, beating off on a plane, I could talk about that, right? Another thing, this is just kind of like a life update of the past two weeks. So I hate to jump around, but that's fucking what this podcast is. Another thing is my merch finally came in. Now, let me run you through. For anybody that wants to make t-shirts or wants to make merchandise if you have a podcast a brand altar whatever the fuck it is uh going with like doing your own merch it's a fucking it's a fucking big ass deal okay i for months i wanted to do this i've talked about this since like the 30th episode um i had i had tested so many different shirts and got so many different qualities Jilden and Haynes and Bella and Canvas and Next Level Apparel. I got like 15 different places that I tested shirts out from. And I finally found, I got these Bella and Canvas shirts. They're really nice. They're made in California. They fucking, I mean, dude, look at this shirt. This is, It's going to be reversed because my fucking podcast is dumb. But look at that. This is, is that not a great fucking logo? Hold on. Let me, let me focus it in here. Dude, I'm so excited about this logo. Shout out to Justin Avente. He is the uh, artist who did this. 
I don't know off the top of my head what his Instagram is, but I'll put it in the description on the podcast and on YouTube. But just to prevent a, thank you, bro, for this fucking artwork. Um, and anyways, I tested out so many fucking t-shirts and I wanted to really get something that was comfortable. I washed a lot of these shirts multiple times and I wanted to make sure they were durable and we fucking got it. It's, it's almost perfect. There's a little bit of like coloring differences on some of the shirts, but they're fucking, they came out great. The other thing is why it was a pain in the ass is I ordered like 114 shirts there's shirts and hoodies. There's two different shirts that are like twenty six and twenty nine dollars, and then the hoodie's gonna be like forty four. I know I was not supposed to talk about this, so my friend Carter, I know, I know I wasn't supposed to do this. I fucking have to do. They're sitting right there. Uh, the podcast is coming, okay? Or not the podcast. The merch is coming. And I'm going to have a website up within this week and you're going to be able to go and look on it. I'm also going to promote it next week so you guys can just click the link from the description. But the fucking behind the scenes of getting this merch was such a pain in the ass. I had to get some some items from a different guy and then print with one company and get the fucking like garments from a different guy and have them shipped here. Uh, and then... What else was there? There were so many different logos that I tried to. Like we had sketched out like 15 different logos and I kept having to correct little things. And I was thankful that I had an artist that was, I mean, this artist, Justin, he was so fucking flexible. I felt bad telling him like, make the eyes a little bit bigger, uh, make this a little bit different, do this shoe. But every fucking, he got it done within like two weeks and it was just great. So if you're going to make a shoe, First of all, the or if you're okay, why you don't why am I dumb? It really sucks that I'm dumb. If you're gonna, if you're gonna make your own merch, first of all, don't go on Google Images and print out a fucking picture and then put that on a shirt and then make them. That's the biggest horse shit idea I've ever heard of. And I know people that have done it, and you guys are dumb. Okay, get a fucking guy, get Justin, go to my my YouTube thing or go to whatever. Or go to my brother, uh, Toonbog on Instagram, or Tony Beeswax. I know so many artists that are very fucking creative and very skilled in what they do, very good at what they do, that if you need art, get it made and explain what you want and make something that's custom, trademark it, and then fucking sell that shit. Because it's so much nicer seeing like something that you know is custom if you can't, if you're not viewing this right now, this logo for my podcast, it's um, it's basically me in a little cartoon form, and I got both my middle fingers out with my black painted nails and my heart tattoo, and I got my fucking ring on there. I got big blue eyes. The podcast mic is hanging down right in front of my face. In the background, there's some Jordans and some Nike shoes, and then underneath it, it says Kicks and Giggles Podcast. I mean, I don't give a fuck who you are. This is a great fucking shirt, and I will be doing some giveaways. Um, when I once the the website's up, I'm gonna give away um, probably like one of each style, and then post them on my website as well. But you're gonna be able to buy those this week, um, so I'll read I'll re fucking add it next week. But I'm super excited about that, and and I just I know that this is a ADD episode, but what is it? What is it without ADD? Sometimes you know or ADHD, whatever it is, the fucking attention shit. So I got my merch talked about. I talked about my girlfriend a little bit, which I wasn't really planning on doing, but I'm happy that I did because you guys got to know what the fuck is up. Um, I talked about New York. That's kind of it. That's just like a little a little update. Um, I talked about working at Urban and why I fucking hate Buckle. And yeah, I mean, now I'm going to talk about shoes in, in the future, for the rest of these podcasts, I am planning, I think I have like four guests for the rest of the year. I have Kendra Lust, I have my brothers, we're, we're do, I'm doing an episode with my brothers, it's going to be really fucking fun. Um, it's going to be me and both of my brothers, and we're just all going to talk about random shit. They might choose the topics, but I, I'm planning on doing that for sure, and then maybe in the winter... I'll have my girlfriend on when she's back from school. I don't know. We're going to, we'll fucking figure it out. There are some guest podcasts coming up and I'm going to change the fucking 
structure a little bit more, probably go back to 30 minutes of talking, 10 minutes of shoes. Uh, and then obviously like that will be every Sunday, 40 minutes long. I think it's easier for you guys to listen to. And, uh, and then the guest episodes are kind of just going to be like until we are done talking because those ones are really more interesting to listen to. And it's just so different that even though it's funny to listen to me talk and like about my life and shit, you can only give so much fuck about so many fucks about my life, right? So that's that. Now I want to talk about these fucking UNC lows really quick. I have these in hand. So if you're looking on the video podcast, you could see them. This is one of my favorite retro one lows of all time. And it almost, no, it doesn't make my favorite retro one. And top 25 retro ones in general. These Eric Costin retro one UNC lows. I don't know if I showed these last week. I don't think I did. I hope I didn't because then I would look like a fucking idiot, right? I don't know. I don't think I did. I talked about them for sure, but I don't think I showed them. These are fucking great. They're hard leather. They're not that tumbled bullshit. They're low tops. Uh, I grabbed these on StockX for like 170 bucks, and I think they're at like 240 right now, and I'm happy. I'm happy with that, you know? These are really fucking great for anybody that just wants a comfortable shoe that also like doesn't have crazy amounts of money to go buy the UNC highs because... These in a 10 and a half are like 240 right now, but in the highs, I think they're at like 450. So you fucking put jeans on and tell your friends that these are fucking high tops. They're not going to know, right? Um, and then there's that UNC, and then there's the Obsidian UNC that just released August 31st. And these are like, these are high tops. Now I have a picture of them behind me. And they're like a dark, very dark navy blue throughout the whole shoe and then it's like a black toe except instead of red in the back on the heel it's uh like a unc blue which is fucking gorgeous i actually did see these shoes in the beginning and i wish that they were black and and unc blue i know it's like extremely hard to tell the difference for some fucking colorblind people out there that are great people and there's nothing wrong with them but for some of those that don't really know how to tell the difference between two colors, uh, some people see this and think, oh, that's black. Well, it's not. Uh, it's navy blue. And I don't fucking like navy blue because if I wear black jeans, navy blue shoes, you could tell the difference. So I didn't get them because of that reason. But for every other reason, I love this shoe. I like the, the black toast style. I just wish it was fucking black. Uh, another thing that's funny about these is that the market was, it's not really that funny and I'm not going to laugh about it, but the market was, uh, like 350 and they released and everybody was fucking hyping over them. And then it was like kind of 320 and then, uh, what was it? Like finish line and champs restocked on their website. And now the market's like 240 for 10 and a half or even 220 even, even, I'd have to say even 30 times. So they're, uh, they're fucking, they're, uh, not expensive. They're only like 50 bucks over, but people thought these were going to be a fucking hit and they weren't. And I think a size 11 and a half and 12 are still around retail. So it's definitely a steal. These are definitely better looking than the gym reds and they're different, even though it's Navy blue and I don't like it. You don't really see Navy blue and light blue and white on a Jordan one often. So you can't get mad at that. You know, I, I, I am a fan of these for the average fucking Jordan guy or the average sneaker seller or buyer that doesn't really care about hype shit. So that's that. And then there's like two more pairs I wanted to talk about. Dude, there's a fucking Air Force One by Levi's. And these shoes, if I don't get them, I'm going to fucking tell my mom that I'm pissed if I don't get these. I'm going to get so mad. I'm working on a deal right now with these I got a picture up behind me. If you don't, if, please look these up if you're not watching the video podcast. Look up Levi's Air Force One Low. They released on my birthday, I think. They're extremely limited. Um, it's like a denim. It's denim throughout the whole shoe, which on Air Force Ones, they're known for having that thick white bottom sole or gum bottom or black, whatever it is. This shoe, it's denim all over the sole of the shoe and then just a dark navy blue sole. 
And then it's a light blue denim throughout the whole shoe that says Levi's and has a Nike swoosh all over it with fucking red laces and uh, a navy blue swoosh that's also denim. It's They're fucking so dope. And then gold on the inside of the shoe. I think that's like, uh, what does that represent? The fucking stitching and then the red represents like the tag. There's it's I love collabs like this. You guys know that I get fucking horny about shit like this. I th- I hope the box is dope. I actually didn't look that up. Let me look it up. Air Force One Low Levi's box. They had to have done a dope box, right? Maybe they did something like the Jordan box. Nike by Air Force One collection. And the back has a Levi's tag on it. There's also a, a high top pair that are like orangey. And those released in London and San Francisco. And like they only released in like eight places. The high tops look like shit. But the low tops, I'm a, I really fucking hope I get them. Because I hate Air Force One lows. But uh, I would fucking definitely want to look at these every day of my life. And maybe jerk off and look at them. Isn't it weird that like... For a guy that sells shoes, he has a foot fetish. Is that why I have one? That's fucked up. That's like when people sit, like if I talk to a girl and I tell her that, she'd be like, oh, it's because you sell sneakers. And then it's like, no, because I don't have a men's foot fetish. That's fucking not my thing at all. I don't know. It's it's a weird thing to have, but... I, I actually love to just look at shoes. I could just sit here and look at the shoe. Maybe I have a, sh- a men's shoe fetish and a woman's foot fetish. That's what I'm learning about myself. This shoe is fucking beautiful. And the smell, the smell of a new pair of shoes is better than a new car smell. It's better than the smell of a fucking vagina. It's better than a, a smell of a cookie cake. It's just the best. One more pack I want to talk about. Okay. You guys know I fucking hate Kobe's. I hate Kobe's. I hate KD's. It's not because I think they're ugly as fuck, which they are, but it's just because I'm not a I'm not a basketball sneaker guy. I like more casual style shoes. I don't play basketball, so I don't get the fucking air holes and the pockets and all that. But as much as I hate Kobe's, they did a it's called a Pronto. It's called the Undefeated Kobe Pronto Pack. And it's eight pairs of, oh no, it's four pairs of shoes and it's one pack and they go on StockX for like 800 bucks. It's like 800 to 1200 depending on the size, but it's, you got a fucking teal pair, a red pair, a purple and yellow, and then a dark green. And it's fucking four pairs of shoes in one pack. This reminds me of the DMPs. It reminds me of the Golden Moments packs that Jordan used to do. Uh, I'm sure there was a Nike fucking... One, plenty of Nike ones, obviously. I just can't think of them. But I like packs. I like to fucking think of... Like, Levi's should have done the Retro 4s. They should have done that in a pack. When fucking Jordan would do the Retro 23s and the 11s, and there was like two pullout drawers, that shit's dope. I don't know how these are coming boxed, but if anybody got these, please let me know if the boxes go together. Um, Adidas did a Dragon Ball Z pack that all the boxes went together and there was design if you put them all together. I fucking like this shit. Let's do more packs, okay? I know that so many people in uh, Nike and Adidas are listening. Let's fucking get some more packs out. And Kanye should have done packs with his fucking 80s colors that looked the same. He should have done like, instead of 220 each shoe, do a pack and release three pairs for five fifty. You get a discount, something, and you get a cool box, something like that. I hope the future of sneakers is more packs like this, and I hope the future of the Kicks and Giggles podcast is nothing but good times. And on that, on that note, I'm gonna go eat some food, and I'm gonna fucking I don't know. I'm gonna play tic tac toe with my dad. <laughs> all right so uh i love you guys thank you for listening sorry this podcast is all over the place but i had to catch you up um next up ep- next episode is going to be the release of the merch and the podcast fucking info and my website's going to be launching then so there's going to be a lot of cool shit there um i'm also going to be having kendra lust on either the seventh or the fucking next week but kendra lust coming very soon 
and a lot more. So thank you for listening. I love you all. Have a beautiful Sunday and stay away from stay away from dynamites.